Welcome to part two of our Grand Antarctica adventure, and you join us just having boarded Aurora Expedition's Greg Mortimer, the ship with an upside down bow, and thankfully everything else the right way up. More about this design later in the series. First though, you're really not going to want to miss this episode. We awoke early on day two of the voyage and peered out to see our first sighting of icebergs as we excitedly leapt up to the top decks to take full advantage of the views. It was just so quiet. But icebergs weren't all we saw. This is day one. And already... Oh gosh. It's like a soup of whales through here. The weather is so... There's one there, look. The weather is so, uh, so good this morning. It's minus two out here. It's barely a breeze. And uh, it's just whales swimming everywhere. It's incredible. Gosh. Look at that one in front of us. Right, I'm gonna grab some special shots. Okay, so we're just back off the Zodiac. It's... Half past 11. Half past 11 on day one, morning one of day one. We left it, we went out at nine, so we went, we've been out for a good couple of hours. We went out at nine on the Zodiacs. So we're doing a Zodiac cruise, I think it was called yeah. this morning. Yeah. And, um, oh my giddy arm. I mean, talk about a, an incredible start to the yeah. voyage. What did we do first? I can't even remember. A cup of coffee. What did we do first? We went over was to see the shipwreck. Was it the shipwreck first? Shipwreck first. So we went over to see a shipwreck first. How old is the shipwreck? Nine, early 1900s. I think it was it's a whaling ship, wasn't it? Or, yeah, it was a whaling ship that um, was celebrating a brilliant catch. They went down to have a party in the lower decks. They were all partying. Someone knocked over a lamp and the whole ship caught fire. So the captain had to sort of run, it it into, really. yeah, run it into <laughs> ground. They all, they all got and off. they all got off. But they survived. They were 85 crew and they all survived. Oh. So that was good. But the ship is still there. So that's incredible. And we went round the back of that. And then we saw round the back standing on, on the... Um, on his own. Snow on its own was a beautiful emperor penguin, which is quite unusual to see. So we were really lucky. So we were all like, oh, wow, this is amazing. And our naturalist was like, oh, this is brilliant. This is, you know, we don't ever see emperor penguins. So um, we stayed there for a little while. Then we left there and the most beautiful leopard seal just incredible oh never seen anything like it in my life it was honestly. just loving all the it zodiacs it came up to the zodiac and it was hugging the zodiac it kept putting its flipper, putting its flipper up onto the, the zodiac and like just slapping the side of it and hugging it and it wouldn't go away i mean it was just playing with the boats and coming out so and it was all on its own and, and, and it just it was like hugging the boat wasn't it yeah well not exactly hugging this frisky young stud was attempting to make sweet love to the Zodiacs. <laughs> Teenagers, eh? This randy act of rubberized wrongdoing was not something even the expedition leaders had seen before. Oh, look at him! Oh, oh. oh my it's god. Amazing. And then on the glassy smooth sea, I mean it was glassy smooth, wasn't it? In the distance. In the, on the horizon. On the horizon basically. A long way away. We saw a couple of whale tails, didn't we? Yeah. Someone spotted some whale tails. So we decided to just So our gung ho hunker down and our, Justine, our brilliant like zodiac driver, said, right, we're, right gonna we're gonna go. And see if we can find them. So <laughs> we Zoomed. Zoomed off. We were the only Zodiac to do it. We yeah. zoomed off to where the whales might be, and the whales were like miles away. So we, we kept going and going and going and going. And uh, it looked like they were swimming away yeah. as well. We were like, oh, we're just going to be chasing and then, them. But... So we cut the engines after a while, and because there was a, a couple um, in front of us, and then there was one at like three o'clock, and it was just amazing just to watch them in the stillness. Actually, it wasn't just watching them, it was hearing, hearing them. them. 
the noises they make, and I don't know if I've actually managed to capture any of that on film. The they noises. were humpback whales. They were humpback they? whales. Yeah. And um, if I've got a little bit, I'll show you now. And we stayed there for about, oh gosh, 20 minutes or so. We did a bit of scientific research while we were there. So we dropped down the, I can't remember what they call the white disc that they drop down. Yeah. So you, the, 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 it's to monitor the plankton in the sea. So you drop the white disc down and you, you keep an eye on it and you measure how far it goes down before you can't see it. Obviously mm. the more plankton in the sea, the quicker you'll lose sight of it. So the less plankton, the more you'll you'll see it. So yeah, um, our Lauren, who is our naturalist, she was able to pinpoint where we were on GPS and then they record the depth there. And we noticed a lot of the zodiacs were doing it obviously in all different places. Mm. So that's really, and we'll do that most days, I think. So that yeah. was cool. So the, the, the actual part, you know, the, the, the point of the, you know, it's, there's a tourism thing as well, but there's also, uh, you know, a science uh, aspect to this ship. So when we go out on Zodiacs, when we go out on land, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the naturalists here and the scientists on the ship are doing science all the time. Yeah. It's fabulous to see because they're actually using it. They're using, uh, you know, the ship half as for tourists and half actually for collect science our, data. Our disc went down 11 meters, Did I it? think more, maybe 11. I, I thought we got distracted by a whale at some point, didn't we? But it, I know it was at least 11 meters before they couldn't well, see it anymore. Well, that, that was a funny thing because while, while uh, poor old, who was it, Lauren? Lauren was We're talking about the, the science. This, this whale had sort of come Snuck behind up. us <laughs> and was kind of like getting closer. And we're like, oh my goodness, guys, this whale is getting closer and closer. And it was a huge whale. Yeah. And so I took some footage of it when I should have been listening to her really yeah. but I mean it, it, it was just the the sea was like oily smooth we were the only ones out there we were the only zodiac that far out yeah. weren't we and so we got the most amazing experience with these whales and then of course we came back and uh, the little uh, leopard seal was still very little it was big it was like Huge. almost as long as the zodiac it wasn't the zodiacs. Nearly as big as the zodiacs the leopard seal was still hugging the other zodiacs. I mean, he just won't go away, will he? And while Rich is talking, I'm going to have to point out to Rich that the, the kayaks are now coming the back. The kayaks out. So, so um, I'm going to nip off now and... Take uh, some footage of the kayakers coming back in. Here's a few seconds of the kayaks. We'll see you this see you afternoon. Later. Bye. <laughs> If you enjoy this video and are interested in knowing more about Aurora Expeditions, our preferred travel partner is Panache Cruises, the elite ocean, expedition, river and yacht style cruising specialists. The team at Panache has decades of combined knowledge and experience in finding the right cruise for you. For a completely personal service, their dedicated cruise connoisseurs will be at your side right from the initial inquiry until you get back from your dream cruise. 
They will help you with every aspect of your holiday. No question too big, no detail too small. Call them now on this number or visit their beautiful website and make your next bucket list cruise, like the one we've just taken on Greg Mortimer, a reality. After an incredible morning of wildlife experiences, our afternoon objective was to set foot on the continent for the very first time. The location was Portal Point, so named as it was a gateway to inland Antarctica. So oh, here we are on the continent of Antarctica, the seventh continent, the last continent. And it's, uh, it's snowy. It's stopped here. It's not, yes, it's not too cold. Um, and uh, this is the afternoon of the first proper day in Antarctica. Oh gosh, the snow. Yeah. I haven't seen snow in the UK this winter, <laughs> have we? So, oh, I feel like Shackleton. Do you feel like Shackleton? Do you feel like Shackleton? I feel like Shackleton. Photo, photo, work gloves. Work. Say Shackleton. Penguin Helen attempts to descend the mountain confidently, striding with great ease, like Scott of the Antarctic or Shackleton. Look at her go. Will she make it? Will she make it? What she stopped for? This is unusual. What is it? Oh, she's checking her Instagram. This penguin poo? Is that what she's taking a picture of? Yes, it is. Look at her face. Right, uh, well, we've avoided the crevices so far and uh, just climbing this sort of snow, it's very blue and fresh, up to the top of this mountain thing. Well, I'm not sure it's called a mountain, but they called it a dome, didn't they, Helen? There is Helen, is she there? Where are you, man? Oh, there she is. Joking aside, I think the entire expedition just had to stop for a few moments and just take it all in. The sense of peace and tranquility here at Portal Point was overwhelming. I think everyone was just mesmerised into silence. Our final thrill of the day was a Zodiac cruise through the hauntingly atmospheric iceberg field that surrounded us. What a beautiful way to finish the most memorable day 
and this part of our vlog series. If you've enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for there's much more to come and you won't want to miss it. In the meantime, click on these to continue the adventure. Thanks.